they say, oh, the VA needs more money. I, it enrages me. They need more accountability. They need more cultural change. They need more competition. They need more reform. Hi, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer for Reason TV, and today we're here with Concerned Veterans for America's Dan Caldwell, uh, right at the origin of the VA scandal in Phoenix, Arizona. Dan, thanks for having us today. Well, thank you for coming out. And just to start off, uh, we, we seem to be getting new intel every day uh, mm -hmm. from the VA, problems associated with it. So if, I, I want to just break it down a little bit. If you could point out what we should be paying attention to, what you think the most important problems are. Well, everybody needs to pay attention to the scale of this. It's not just an isolated incident. This is across the country. At just about every VA facility, uh, problems are starting to emerge, every major VA facility. 70% uh, of VA facilities have had somebody say that they've been pressured to engage in inappropriate scheduling practices. So the scale of it is astounding. And Senator Coburn just came out with his report. Can you talk about some of his findings? To steal a line from one of our policy analysts, it basically reads like a, a bad movie script about an out of control government bureaucracy. If a bunch of libertarians were to get together and write a movie script about how big government fails and, and how evil it is, Dr. Tom Coburn wrote it. And from what you've seen in there, you have everything from you know out of control VA police departments uh, to you know sex offenders working in VA hospitals, misspent funds. Um, Dr. Coburn has really kind of put everything together in one damning document about how bad things are at the VA. Can you talk more about the systemic problems and causes and uh, what, what these kind of factors are? The VA, has its budget's been nearly tripled since 2001. This is not a resource issue at the VA. This is an issue of, an, of a toxic culture a management that is out of control and thinks it's above the law and, and, and knows it doesn't have to do its job to get bonuses and to, and to keep their jobs, and of a frankly single-payer healthcare system that isn't accountable to any competition forces, doesn't have to worry about competitors or anything else. If you go back to late 90s, what you saw happening was is the veteran population was starting to shrink in the United States. The World War II generation was starting to unfortunately pass away, and fewer and fewer veterans were starting to use the VA. So they made a decision that they were going to go to Congress, they are going to go to the President, and they were going to expand the pool of veterans that could receive VA care. By the early 2000s and by the time 9-11 rolled around, the war in Afghanistan began, and by the time the Iraq War began, you had millions of veterans using the VA who hadn't qualified before. Um, that was really kind of the start of it. Uh, at the time, though, the Secretary of the VA, Secretary Principi, made a decision to freeze enrollment for a certain group of veterans who weren't combat wounded, that were rather well off, and that didn't have any type of service-related disabilities. So for about seven years, that type of enrollment was frozen. But then Secretary Shinseki comes in, President Obama comes in, and that enrollment again is opened. Per patient spending increased, and it has a total top line increase. So it wasn't like they were getting the, new, the, the resources not to serve these veterans. The problem was is that they seemed to lack the ability to allocate them properly and to properly serve these veterans and make good decisions about their care. So that's how you really kind of start to see the development of these secret wait lists, these fudge numbers, because then at the same time you had this performance metric system that weighed really heavily on, on reducing wait times, but at the same time was very easily gamed. So you kind of have this perfect storm of, of you know, more veterans using the system, more money, not a lot of accountability. It's almost impossible to fire, and still is, a VA employee who engages in misconduct or is poorly performing. The chief of the VA um, here in Phoenix was just moved to being head of a different department still at the VA. We're talking about the, the chief of staff. He's yeah. a GS-15. They're very difficult to fire, and it oftentimes takes years. Sharon Hellman, the director of the hospital, the Secretary Shinseki supposedly, one of the last things he did was start the process to fire her. It's July 1st, he started that May 30th. She's still, to our knowledge, on the payroll. And you think one of the solutions or steps towards a solution is to start privatizing parts of the VA? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, our, our group and, and others now believe that there should be more services at the VA where you have a private health care option. 
uh, particularly primary care services. Um, you know, standard things you'd go to your family doctor for, whether it's a regular checkup, you know, an issue with, with uh, the flu, something along those lines. I, I don't see a reason why the VA should be doing those things. I think that they need to specialize in treating for war, root, war wounds, um, service-related disabilities, uh, other things along those lines. And at Concerned Veterans, what are you, are you actively working on these uh, yes. institutional problems? Yes, we have for really even before the scandal broke, really since our inception going back to 2012, we've really focused a lot at, on the institutional problems within the VA. For a long time, we've been supporting a measure known as the VA Management Accountability Act, which would make it easier to fire some of these poorly performing managers. That's now part of the, the VA Conference Committee. So we're hopeful that in some capacity that will be passed into law. Uh, we were one of the first groups to call for Secretary Shinseki to resign. We think a lot more people need to be resigned, fired, and in some cases probably put in jail. We think that what you see with some of these Veteran Choice Act and some of these bills that are going to give rural veterans and veterans who've been on a wait list a long time more private health care options to probably be expanded. And we'd like to see more of that. And we're going to keep we're going to keep out there, you know, pushing for the cultural change and the legislative change as well. Dan, thanks. Thanks again for having us today. Well, thank you for coming out and uh, doing this story. I think it's very important. For Reason TV, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer.